a comet from another star system heading toward Mars. Astronomers are continuing to track a newly spotted object, likely a comet, from outside our solar system. Headlines call it a possible disaster, but the real story is much more fascinating. Uh, this is not a rock, and in that case, maybe it's targeting the inner solar system. Scientists aren't predicting a crash. They're tracking a once-in-a-generation opportunity. This isn't about fear. It's about what we stand to learn. So, Harvard and NASA are warning about a comet possibly hitting Mars. That sounds like another space disaster headline. But here's the twist. Even if no impact occurs, the data still tell us a fascinating story about how scientists track fast-moving objects from beyond our solar system. The real story is much more interesting than the exaggerated one. And that's what you're here for. What we actually know about 3, IATLAS. For most headlines, the idea that a comet could hit a planet sounds alarming. But when scientists use that phrase, the meaning is far more technical than dramatic. What they are really saying is that, based on early calculations, there is a slim mathematical chance that the object's path and Mars's position could overlap. That is very different from predicting a collision is on the way. To understand why, we need to look at what 3i Atlas actually is, and how astronomers even track something so unusual. 3i Atlas is no ordinary comet. The I in its name marks it as an interstellar object, which simply means it did not form here in our solar system. Instead, it belongs to the rare category of visitors that come from beyond our sun's gravitational neighborhood moving along paths shaped by entirely different stars. In fact, this is only the third time astronomers have confirmed such an intruder. The two earlier ones were one, I. Umamua, in 2017, and two, I. Borisov, in 2019. Each object provided rare data, since they travel too fast to be captured by the sun, and will leave after only a brief flyby. That makes every observation urgent. From the first images of 3i Atlas, scientists knew this would be a challenging case. Initial measurements showed it had a highly elongated path, coming in from deep space at great speed. But when you only have a handful of early data points, the range of possible paths fans out widely. A single mismeasurement, say, mistaking its position by a fraction of an arc second on the sky, can expand into millions of kilometers of difference by the time you project its orbit months or years ahead. This property explains why the early talk of a possible Mars encounter emerged. Harvard researchers and NASA scientists began running thousands of orbital models. Each model, called an orbital solution, represents one possible trajectory based on the current measurements. Taken together, they show a spread of confidence intervals, or ranges of probability, for where the comet might be at a given time. When some of those solutions overlapped with Mars's orbit, the phrase possible impact entered the headlines. But here, certainty matters. A possible outcome can mean one chance in many thousands, and those odds shrink as better observations arrive. An analogy helps here. Imagine spotting an unfamiliar airplane on a distant radar screen. With only a blurry return, you try drawing its flight path across the sky. At first, your line could take it toward a city, or out to sea, or into mountains. But as you ping it again and again, the line straightens into one clear path. It's the same with interstellar comets. More nights of tracking mean a more refined orbital solution. And in most cases, the early alarming possibilities vanish as the confidence interval tightens. Still, scientists must take every scenario seriously until ruled out. We saw this with Comet Siding Spring in 2014, which passed extremely close to Mars. At first, there was real concern it could strike, since the difference between a near miss and impact came down to fine measurements. NASA even adjusted spacecraft orbits to shield them from possible debris as it swept past. Paid off. The comet missed, but the data collected during the flyby reshaped understanding of comet interactions with planetary atmospheres. This brings us back to why Harvard and NASA issue these notices at all. They are not predicting doom for Mars. Instead, they are practicing careful risk management. 
by flagging improbable but not impossible scenarios early, they protect orbiters and rovers while ensuring priceless interstellar data is gathered. That is the real key takeaway. Responsible tracking, not fear. But if the likelihood of Mars being struck remains low, why do scientists still treat the chance as important? That question opens the door to the more fascinating part of the story. What we could learn if even a near encounter occurs. Why a Mars strike would be a scientific goldmine. Imagine using Mars as a laboratory for an experiment we could never set up on Earth. That is essentially what scientists think about when they discuss the small but real chance of 3A Atlas colliding with the red planet. Mars gives us a natural test site where the forces of a comet impact could play out under conditions very different from home. Its thin atmosphere, its dusty surface, and the fact that we already have many machines watching, it make the planet uniquely suited for observing such a rare event. If a comet, like 3 I Atlas, did strike Mars, the sequence would be unlike what we expect here. Earth's thick atmosphere breaks up many incoming objects before they reach the surface. Mars, however, has only about 1% of Earth's air pressure, which means more of the comet would reach the ground intact. The result could be a much larger crater, a strong blast wave racing across the landscape, and plumes of dust shot high above the surface. We have no confirmed record of an interstellar object hitting any planet before, so researchers rely on computer models. These models simulate possibilities ranging from a modest blast to a regional dust storm, triggered by fine particles settling down over time. The scale is uncertain, but the stakes are high for learning. From such an event, the scientific payoff would be enormous. Instruments on orbiters could analyze the chemical fingerprint of the comet dust, giving direct insight into what kinds of materials form around other stars. Rovers on the ground, if they were within range, could study how shocked Martian soil changes after being hit by extreme heat and pressure. Even the thin atmosphere comes into play, since adding comet vapor and dust could cause unexpected reactions in the carbon dioxide dominated air. Each of these data points would offer clues about conditions far beyond our own solar system. There is also the indirect opportunity to test what is often called planetary defense. Normally, discussions of protecting worlds from comet or asteroid strikes focus entirely on Earth. In this case, Mars could serve as a lower risk stand-in. By tracking the impact, if it happened, we would learn how strong the blast is, how far debris spreads, and what secondary effects arise. That knowledge feeds back into planning for possible Earth-bound encounters in the future. Even without a collision, a close flyby of 3 i at las would still matter. Small grains could brush into Mars's atmosphere, sprinkling the planet with interstellar material. This would give scientists a chance to collect samples remotely through spectrometers on orbiting spacecraft. The advantage here is that Mars might receive a delivery of alien dust without suffering destructive consequences. Models from past comets suggest even a light shower of particles can make detectable changes in the upper atmosphere. We saw this vividly in 2014 with Comet Siding Spring. That comet missed Mars, but passed close enough that orbiters detected a storm of new molecules and ions in the Martian air. The effect lasted only hours, yet it forced researchers to rewrite parts of their comet-planet interaction models. If a homegrown comet could do that, an interstellar one could provide even more distinctive signatures. Scientists want to know whether chemical markers from another star system would register the same way, or if new patterns would show up. Thanks to the ongoing presence of spacecraft like NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and ESA's Mars Express, sensors are already in place to capture such side effects. Ground controllers can coordinate multiple instruments at once, ensuring no moment of the encounter goes unrecorded. That means whether three I Atlas crashes or simply passes nearby, we will still gather fresh information. In plain terms, this makes the comet a once-in-a-generation opportunity. Regardless of exactly how close the approach is, the chance to study raw material from another stellar system 
cannot be reproduced in any earth laboratory. So, this is not a case of feeding fear. It is a reminder of how much insight can come from events that first appear threatening. Which leads to an important question. What exactly do these warnings reveal about the way science treats uncertainty itself? Conclusion The real story here is not about a looming disaster. It is about how careful tracking of low probability events transforms them into chances for valuable research. Each new data point shrinks uncertainty and turns risk assessment into science preparation. That is why agencies invest so much effort in refining orbits rather than framing predictions as certainty. In plain terms, every interstellar object reminds us how much there is still to learn and how precision leads to discovery. Keep an eye on updates from NASA and the Harvard-Smithsonian, where the focus is always on curiosity, not fear.